What's good y'all, it's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out the awful Degeneration X versus Brothers of Destruction match. Now this is a match I've never actually seen in entirety. Um, I remember when this match was about to happen. And I, for, I think I ended up missing the pay-per-view because of uh, the time differential from when it happened uh, overseas. So I ended up missing the pay-per-view. But I saw clips of it and I saw people talking about it and how hurt people were because this match was just, just dreadful. The build-up to it was pretty good. The hype for it was pretty good. But the it's just the execution of this match was just god awful and just seeing the clips alone made me want to just stay away from watching it in its entirety so we're gonna check this out uh this is by the channel wrestling bios definitely go give them a, a subscription check them out as well uh this should be an interesting one i want to see how he breaks this down once again by wrestling bios go subscribe to that channel link to the original video will be down down below let's get into this debacle of a match man <laughs> I like this mashup. That's that's cool. I like this mashup. That was a cool little mashup how they did that. Ah, uh, the Brothers of Destruction and DX. This is going to be a tough one. For fans of the Attitude Era and even afterwards, it didn't get any better than these two teams. And even mm -hmm. if you weren't a fan of these guys, they were still very important in shaping the WWF or WWE and helping the company in terms of popularity. Mm -hmm. It's interesting how both teams began their on-screen relationships around the same time period, with Sean Hunter and The Undertaker all being present for the debut of the Kane character. And as those early days continued on, DX, Kane and Taker were all intertwined right up until the original DX collapsed in 1998. For many people, D-Generation X and the Brothers of Destruction were a part of their childhoods. All Facts. four men became cornerstones of WWE, and they had an insane amount of fan support whether they were good guys or bad guys. Quite simply, they were four legends of the company. Mm -hmm. Time moves on though, and time doesn't wait for anybody. As the WWE evolved over the years, so did the professional and personal lives of these four legends. Triple H became way more hands-on behind the scenes. Glenn Jacobs would become the mayor of Knox County. Shawn Michaels- Which is really crazy to think. The devil's favorite demon is a mayor. Who would have thought? <laughs> retired and he began working with the talent at NXT. And The Undertaker, well, the dead man was still competing in the ring, mm -hmm. searching for a final match that would satisfy his desire to leave wrestling on a high note. In 2018, the idea of DX getting back together to face the Brothers of Destruction sounded impossible, mainly due to HBK's retirement and Glenn Jacobs getting so heavily involved in politics. But strange things can happen when the WWE go to Saudi Arabia. Yep, that bottom, bottom dollar, man. I'm telling you, when it comes to these Saudi shows, which I can't wait for them to be out of their little deal that they have, and I don't know how many years they have left on their deal, um, but once they leave on and done with that, no more, no more, please. They, these shows have become so, I guess you can say, um, taxing to the overall product because they put on matches that really they're fantasy booking matches, matches that's not supposed to happen or should happen end up on these shows because they request it. Simple as that. Simple as that. People way past their prime in matches that they should not be in because they're requested. Uh, and indeed, it felt strange when a DX versus Brothers of Destruction match was announced for the Crown Jewel 2018 show. Let's take a look at what could only be described as a train wreck match that maybe yeah. shouldn't have happened at all on November 2nd, 2018. Let's get into it, man. 
When The Undertaker <coughs> retired Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 26, it felt a little bittersweet for many fans, including yeah. myself. For HBK sure, for was sure. still putting on incredible performances all the way up to 2010, even outperforming many of the younger main eventers on the mm -hmm. roster. But Shawn thought it was time to go, and he talked about ending his career on a high note. HBK stated the best way to go is to leave fans wanting more, and he didn't want to be another guy who couldn't perform the way he once did during the twilight years of his career. So while I and I'm sure many others wanted Sean to hang around and have more matches. His decision to leave while still being the showstopper in the main event was understandable. Yeah, so his send off at that moment was great. I, I even though I wanted to see more of him, the lat those two matches he had at WrestleMania um, with the Undertaker were Chef's Kiss, so good. So legendary in the last match he had, um, obviously with the Undertaker ending his uh, career was it was great. It, it it ended off a legendary career, and I think a lot of people wanted to see him back for one more match. But I think people were okay knowing that the match that he did have was fantastic, man. Rumors began circulating <clears throat> during 2016 regarding a potential Shawn Michaels return. The 2017 Royal Rumble was being held in Shawn's hometown of San Antonio, Texas inside the Alamo Dome. The event marked the 20th anniversary of Shawn beating Psycho Sid to reclaim the World Wrestling Federation Championship in the same venue. And the rumors went into overdrive when AJ tweeted out a pay-per-view mock-up featuring HBK and AJ standing mm -hmm. in front of the San Antonio skyline. Unfortunately, this match didn't happen, but Sean and AJ did talk about the potential matchup on Table for Three, a WWE Network show where superstars discuss practically anything while having dinner. What Sean says to AJ is very fascinating, and we can learn a bit more about Sean's mindset here when it came to returning for one more match. On the Table for Three show that featured Kevin Nash, AJ Styles and Shawn Michaels, AJ said he got interested in a Shawn Michaels match when he heard HBK was attending the Performance Center. AJ wanted the higher ups to ask Shawn if he wanted to do something at the Royal Rumble. Nash said he saw AJ's tweet and thought the match would be sweet. And Shawn says that he too saw the graphic and Shawn admired the fact that AJ was keeping his name out there by tweeting out the mock-up. HBK then revealed that writers had previously pitched ideas for Shawn to come back, but this Royal Rumble match in the Alamo Dome was actually pitched to Shawn by Vince McMahon himself. Mm. HBK liked the idea of wrestling styles. He rubbed his hands together while thinking about what kind of match the heartbreak hit in the funnel. Bro, imagine AJ Styles in number two turning Shawn Michaels in a match. Oh, bro. Oh, bro. Woo! Woo! Oh. Nothing else needs to be said. That would have been... That would have been... <laughs> Hella entertaining. Oh my god, that would have been good. one could potentially have, and what story they could tell in the ring. Sean found it a fascinating prospect. He knew he and AJ would have to work their tails off, but ultimately, Sean admitted that he couldn't wrestle to the level he once could. And there's an awkward silence here when Sean asks AJ and Nash who would go over in that match. Who wins mm. an AJ Styles versus Shawn Michaels yeah. bout? If Shawn wins, it does nothing for AJ, and AJ doesn't look good. If AJ wins, then Shawn's legacy maybe gets further tarnished due to coming out of mm. retirement just to take a loss in San Antonio. Plus, he thought it would be anticlimactic as well. AJ agrees with Michaels, saying it would be a risk to go out again after having such a good match with The Undertaker. True. And Shawn then says that he looks at the whole story arc of the Heartbreak Kid, from throwing Marty Jan Eddie through the glass at the barber shop to defying the Undertaker before the last Tombstone pile driver. HBK considers that whole stretch the story of his career. Mm. Another match would sit independently away from that whole arc, and it would also feel pointless. AJ compares this to the Rocky V movie, saying it was unnecessary. So, the big takeaway here is that Sean felt a return match would need to fit into the story of his character, and it also sounds like Sean didn't want to come back just to take another loss. We're going Understandable. to come back to this soon. Creative Understandable. And story arcs, of course, were not the only reason for working a show in Saudi Arabia, but more on this in a moment.
Absolutely out of the blue, a match between Triple H and The Undertaker was announced for the Super Showdown 2018 event in Melbourne, Australia. Hunter came out to the ring on the August 20th, 2018 episode this. of Raw, I, I and he said after watching SummerSlam, this. he got the itch to lace up his boots again and once again be the game. He thought this would happen, and that's why when Vince called him a few weeks prior to pitch a match at Super Showdown, Hunter agreed. When Vince said this match would be against The Undertaker, the game wasn't so sure. The end of an era Hell in a Cell match he and Taker had meant a lot to Triple H, and when mm -hmm. he, Sean and Taker stood on the entranceway at the end of that match, it changed all three men. Sean would disappear for good, The Undertaker's streak would eventually come to an end, yep. and Triple H would put on a suit. The era really did end that night and everything changed. Hunter thought about it and he agreed to do the match only if The Undertaker agreed to be the phenom one more time. A bygone era was gonna return. This Super Showdown match will feature The Undertaker in the game and it'll be one last time. The following week, Shawn Michaels announced that he was going to Australia too so he can see the match in person. HBK then said The Undertaker's chances weren't so good this time around seeing as The Undertaker's streak ended and some of that mystique has been taken away from the phenom. Triple H, on the other hand, is still the game and still the cerebral assassin, and Triple H has a lot more left in the tank in comparison to The Undertaker. The dead man shows up, and Taker says Sean just made this thing personal. Mm -hmm. Taker's already put Sean and Hunter down, and the degenerates can't accept it. Sean only thinks Triple H is gonna win because Taker took away Sean's career, and Sean says he stayed away from the ring because he's a man of his word, because he respects the fans, and because he respects The Undertaker. The this was a good segment. I remember watching this. This was a pretty cool. They're back and forth, seeing them interact with each other again on the microphone. This was this was really uh, n nicely built up. Chance one more match, and Sean says he hears that in every arena he goes to. He gets people asking him for one more match backstage. He turns down millions of dollars every year, and he's done it all out of respect for The Undertaker. Undertaker wonders if it's really respect, or is it fear? That was because a good line. Sean does come out of retirement, there's only one guy he can come after, and that's the dead man. And the dead man says he would put Sean down again. Mm -hmm. HBK knows it, the fans know it, Taker knows it, <clears throat> but for now, Taker's gonna focus on putting Sean's buddy down again at the Super Showdown event. This promo here was obviously the strongest hint so far that Michaels was planning to have another match, but it still yeah. in a way felt unlikely after what Sean said in interviews following WrestleMania 26. If we go back to what Sean said to AJ on Table for 3 <clears throat> within the context of storylines, it kinda made sense. Sean vs The Undertaker again wouldn't feel independent from HBK's story arc. It would fit right in at the end and yeah. it was simple yet brilliant. Sean says he's staying away out of respect. Taker says Sean's just afraid of him. So it's almost like Taker invited Sean to come out of retirement and try his luck again. Over the next two weeks, it was revealed that Shawn Michaels was going to stand in Triple H's corner for the Melbourne match, so The Undertaker announced that Kane was going to return and stand in his corner. Kane had been active in WWE during late 2017 and early 2018, while making a few sporadic appearances through the year, but he was definitely winding down considerably to focus yeah. on a new career path. On the Raw before Super Showdown then, Shawn Michaels warned Kane not to step in the ring or get involved because the Big Red Machine will have to deal with the Heartbreak Kid. Kane then appeared behind <laughs> Michaels and Shawn got floored after a big right hand. The lights then went out in the arena and The Undertaker then stood over Shawn when the lights came back on. Undertaker was just about to tombstone Shawn but Triple H ran to the ring. The game fought both Brothers of Destruction but on this night DX weren't- It was just interesting seeing HBK without his hair, it kind of, it just made me realize how time has really just flown by. Granted, he didn't have to cut his hair, but it was just interesting to see that. I was like, yo, we are really getting <laughs> up in age here, man. Shawn Michaels with no hair, it's wild. <laughs> good enough. Sean and Hunter take choke slams, and The Undertaker decides to tombstone Triple H for good measure before leaving the ring with his little brother. Super Showdown was already getting panned by critics and fans before the event even took place, and that's because it was sandwiched between Hell in a Cell in September and Evolution in October. Mm -hmm. It felt superfluous to a lot of fans, and it just added to an already bloated WWE calendar. 
Triple H versus The Undertaker should have felt like a bigger deal and had the match taken place at WrestleMania then it might have felt a bit more important but yeah. the WWE decided to do it at this show and so did the game and so did the Phenom. HBK couldn't help himself, he jumped on the apron a few times and he distracted The Undertaker more than once. He would then get physical with the dead man and Kane would have to try and stop Sean while also trying to maintain some order. Soon though Kane would get more involved and he would try to make things difficult for Hunter so Kane ended up taking sweet chin music and Triple H put the big red machine through a table. The Undertaker gets the better of Hunter and Sean was forced to watch his friend take a few hard chair shots. Michaels tried to reason with The Undertaker and when that didn't work Michaels got inside the ring and he got punched in the nose. Still though <laughs> all this bought Triple H enough time to hit a spine buster but Taker kicked out of the cover. Sean handed Triple H his sledgehammer, Kane passed the chair to The Undertaker, Hunter waxed the chair and the chair waxed the phenom but there's no referee to count the pinfall. In the end Kane and Sean get in the ring, Kane gets taken out with a low blow, The Undertaker tries to tombstone Michaels but he takes a sledgehammer shot from Triple H leading to HBK performing the super kick and Triple H ends it with a pedigree. It was a bit messy and yeah. it was without a doubt the weakest Undertaker vs Triple H match to ever take place on pay per view. I don't think I ever even saw this one either live, uh, I think I ended up watching this afterwards and it wasn't uh. It, it wasn't one of those things where it was like, uh, it was it was okay, it was serviceable. Uh, I, I don't know. It just it didn't have that effect that you would think these four guys, the history that they all have, you would think it would it would be a, a a different type of feeling you would get from that. But I don't know. It just came off as like, all right, well they they got it done, but it doesn't seem like this is over. It seems like they'll probably end up booking something else with these guys. But I don't know. It just was like. If they could have ended it here, probably would have been okay. But we all know that bottom dollar, man, it, it speaks volumes to how things get played. Uh, well, well, when Vince McMahon was in charge. I don't know. It may be a little bit different now. With all the interference truly hurting the overall flow of the match. But it was done like this for a reason. It looks like DX and the Brothers <clears throat> of Destruction are gonna let bygones be bygones as D Generation X help the brothers to their feet for a celebration. But Kane and Taker then attack DX and yep. it's made clear that this isn't over. Triple yep. H gets tombstoned and HBK gets put through a commentary table. Once that happened, I knew all that. Triple H and Shawn Michaels do something opened up else. the following night and they talked about respect. Hunter talked about how he respected Shawn Michaels, how Shawn showed respect by sticking to his word and staying retired even when everyone else wanted him to wrestle. And HBK talked about how your respect for someone can change over time. Shawn had a long think about Super Showdown on the flight back from Australia. He thought about how he honored his word not to wrestle out of a respect that didn't even exist. So when the flight landed, Triple H asked HBK a question. Are you ready? Hunter knows that Sean's ready, but he wonders if the Brothers of Destruction are ready for D Generation X at Crown Jewel. Sean and Hunter reveal their D Generation X shirts and they bring a formal return to the faction here. And fans pop when they realize oh, yeah. that HBK maybe just announced his return to the ring. Later I remember watching that, I was like, okay, this is interesting. Okay. Even though what we just saw was could have been a little executed better. Sean is actually coming out of retirement one more time to have a, a DX versus Brother of Destruction match. It's pulling on my nostalgia heartstrings, but you know what? I'm here for it. Once again, didn't get to see it, and I'm glad I didn't because it probably would have tainted my 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 view on all these guys in their later years. <laughs> In the show, Michael Cole makes it official when he announces the match along with a match graphic and then the internet went into overdrive. Remember how Sean talked about his return having to be right creatively and it had to make sense for him to want to come back? Well all that was thrown out the window because mm -hmm. something that can't be argued is the fact that a lot of money was and still is involved in these Saudi Arabia shows. Mm -hmm. No matter what you may think of these shows, it's no secret that superstars who make these one off appearances at these kind of events get paid very very well. Yep. Fans didn't give a shit about any creative reasons for Sean coming out of retirement. There were zero discussions about the AJ Styles conversation at Table for Three. It went straight to money and politics. 
And hey, you gotta admit too, even the most diehard of HBK fans had to look at this and see it for what it was. Sean's opinion and reasoning has changed over the years. He stated it wasn't breaking his retirement vow and it was like a band getting back together for one night to have fun. He also said he could have earned a lot more money doing a singles match at WrestleMania instead of a tag match in Saudi Arabia, while also stating there wouldn't be another chance for all four of these guys involved to get together and have this bout. I think that's bullshit by the way because all four <laughs> men were just back from Melbourne, Australia, but anyway. In short, HBK said it wasn't about the money. He didn't want to be in a tough position at WrestleMania where he's expected to wrestle a five-star match against a younger guy. According to Michaels, it was just for fun. It was an opportunity that Michaels thought would never come up, and that's why he agreed to do it. And here's the thing. He makes some points there. Him coming back to have a solo one-on-one -on -one match, the expectations, it's going to be kind of high. We obviously expect nothing but the best from Shawn Michaels. Um, but at the same time, yeah, I'm pretty sure Vince was trying to throw him big money to have a, a solo return for one more match. Um, but they were paying him good money to be in a tag match where you don't have to carry as much of the weight of the match. You can kind of coast by because you're in a tag match. I mean, it's kind of hard not to be like, all right, I had a little bit fun out there in the uh, with you guys at the previous show. You know what? Let's continue it on. And I'm getting paid even more money in a tag match. Why not? I mean, I get it. But at the same time, him trying to say, well, you know, oh, nah, you know, I didn't, I, you know, I gotten paid. I would have gotten paid more doing solo properly. So, and this is, you know, I, I don't know if this was going to happen again. I mean, there could be some truth to it. But at the same time, it's a win win for him. He comes back, he doesn't have to do much, and he's getting paid a buttload of money for one match. How many of us would come out of retirement for that in our professions? Take from that what you will, it's completely your call, but you have to admit it's a little hard to believe and trust me, I'm a huge HBK fan. I really wanted to see Sean wrestle again, but I was kind of shocked when the match was announced. Mm -hmm. Crown Jewel 2018 also would end up surrounded in a lot of controversy, and yep. there were calls for the show to get completely cancelled. But it went ahead, and HBK, Kane, Triple H, and Undertaker all performed in the main event. The circumstances, the location, the timing, all that overshadowed the in-ring return of one of WWE's greatest ever superstars. And again, gonna be honest, the WWE and Shawn Michaels should have known this was gonna happen. Also, just a little side note, it's okay to have mixed feelings about this. You could be a big HBK fan and still not agree with him coming back at Crown mm -hmm. Jewel, it's fine. And it's also fine to have a hard stance on the matter, but don't feel bad if you're unsure how to feel about it. Not everything's black and white, particularly in the world of professional wrestling. True, true, true. Very good point, very good point. The following week, a pre-taped promo aired featuring Kane and The Undertaker. The dead man repeated that it wasn't respect that kept Michaels retired, it was HBK's fear of the Reaper. Kane said Sean was afraid of humiliation, the humiliation of getting defeated again by The Undertaker. But at Crown Jewel, when D-Generation X faced the Brothers of Destruction for the very first time, all of Sean's fears will come true. A war will begin and end at Crown Jewel. Triple H can go back to the boardroom after his defeat and Sean can shuffle back to the safety of retirement. DX had three words for the brothers, are you ready? The brothers have three words for DX, rest in peace. On The Undertaker's last ride documentary, there's a uh, great idea. I was, ho I was hoping he was going to mention that. If you guys seen the documentary and they showed like a little blooper reel <laughs> when they said we got three words for you, go... <laughs> Go F yourselves. That shit was so funny. That was that was funny. I wish they would have kept that. <laughs> that was so funny to hear that. Promo where the Phenom had three different words for Hunter and Sean. Go f yourself. <laughs> In the, the, week in the after, shop by chain, that was great. An in ring DX promo. The brothers were seen in a graveyard, and Taker said the DX reunion will serve as the vessel for the team's total annihilation. DX should have stayed away. They can't turn back the clock. They can't outrun the Reaper, and they can't survive the Brothers of Destruction. Kane and Taker then reveal HBK and Triple H's tombstones, and they tell Sean and Hunter that DX will never rest in peace. It was DX, though, who got the last laugh during the build up. 
Triple H interrupted a Brothers of Destruction promo this time and he lured Kane away from the ring, allowing HBK to hit Taker with sweet chin music. Taker sat up afterwards and DX got a little shaken up, but HBK showed everyone that he still had the ability to put The Undertaker down if the right opportunity presented itself. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do it. Let's look at the match. <laughs> oh, Prime boy. An example of why some things are best left alone. Oh, it boy. It took a little time, but Shawn Michaels did finally say that he regretted performing in this match, but he only regretted it because he didn't know The Undertaker was trying to end his career with a great bout. HBK apologized to Taker Kane and Triple H when he realized The Undertaker was seeking his final match, but trust me, if you haven't seen this yet, Shawn Michaels ends up being the best performer of the match. He has his bad moments too, just like every everyone else, but in comparison to his dance partners, he didn't come out of it looking all that bad. The bad match is maybe not the most disappointing thing about all this, and it's maybe more about the fact that they allowed themselves to have the bad match in the first place, mm -hmm. but enough of all that, you can be the judge here. Sean and Hunter are wearing hybrid DX and NXT gear that I thought looked great, the old guard representing the new blood. And the stadium looks absolutely brilliant when oh, the yeah. of destruction make their way down that to the That visual ring. looks loads crazy. Loads of stalling at the beginning of the match, loads of shit talking, it settles down to Kane and Triple H, and Hunter starts it off by punching Kane in the face he then counters in the corner and he tries to crotch chop or chop his crotch whatever and kane <laughs> punches right back <laughs> triple h stops kane from tagging in the dead man he gets the crowd fired up when he points the hbk sean gets the tag the crowd pops and michaels comes off the top rope with a double axe handle HBK once again it's just seeing hbk with a bald head is just it blew my mind around that time it was just like what the wow it's still that's just that's always just gonna be like a damn bro we are getting old moment <laughs> performs a swinging neck breaker that he seems very proud of but kane sits up and sean almost gets choke slammed kane then counters a sunset flip he goes for a tombstone but sean reverses and he feigns a super kick he laughs at kane and he says he could have had him just then but the brothers aren't in the mood for jokes tonight kane tags in the undertaker <laughs> and sean loses his smile uh, the undertaker hit the Tag me in, Kane. <laughs> he has to face the Reaper for the first time since Mania 26. Mm -hmm. Triple H tells Sean to go after the dead man. The Undertaker performs his cutthroat taunt, and Sean tells Taker to suck it. <laughs> Michaels gets in a few chops, but he goes down after a big boot. Taker then softens up the arm and shoulder for old school, but Triple H runs in to stop the dead man, and this leads to Kane jumping in too. All four men fight in the ring. Sean gets hung up in the tree of woe. Kane throws Triple H into Sean, and then disaster struck. While taking this bump, Hunter falls out of the ring, and he tears his pectoral muscle. Oh, the same injury man. that more recently put Cody Rhodes on the shelf. You can see oh, here how bad man. the injury was after the match, Shoo! but even when watching the bout, you knew something was up. Sean gets dumped out of the ring too, so he can check on his teammate. The brothers wait in the ring to buy some time and get a damage report. And it's not good. HBK Damn. was likely relying on Triple H in this match, but Hunter's hurt. And Sean, the guy who's been retired, might have to put in an extra bit of work tonight. Damn, imagine you out there, You this is your first time being really in a wrestling ring in that capacity, coming out of retirement, and your tag team partner ends up tearing his pet. The guy that you were kind of leaning a little bit more on to kind of carry the load of the match. Now you're like, uh oh, ah, this is this is interesting. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it, it changes the whole dynamic because it's it's damn near it's almost impossible to really do what you want to do with a torn pec. We've seen what happened with Cody. I didn't really know he ended up tearing his pec. I don't I don't remember uh, uh, people talk. Well, I'm sure people talked about it. I just didn't remember it or whatnot. But that definitely does play a part into why the match was what it was. Damn. Sheesh. Hunter's not completely out. He's going to do what he can, but he can't really use his right arm. He tries to chop with his left arm before sending Kane and Taker out of the ring, and the referee checks on Hunter while the cameras focus on HBK. Back inside the ring, Sean takes old school while Triple H looks like he's in absolute agony at the oh ring my steps. God. HBK gets choked in the corner, but he manages to dodge a big boot. Hunter gets tagged in, and again, he uses... I will say this. You may not be a fan of Triple H, but... Triple H is a tough SOB, bro. If you guys remember him tearing his, I think he tore his quads. Uh, I think he ended up tearing like his uh, one of his quads in the the infamous 
It was another tag team match, D-Generation X versus a rated RKO. He tore, his, uh, he tore his quad in that match, and he still finished the match. That's just a testament to how tough he is. He's wrestling with a torn muscle and trying to give it his all. Impressive. This is the left arm to chop the phenom. Taker puts Hunter down with a clothesline. He brings the game over to the Brothers of Destruction's corner where Kane gets tagged in and nobody really knows what to do. Hunter decides he's gonna take a slam and he rolls away from an elbow drop afterwards. The referee rushes to Triple H to oh see if he's God. okay. He gets up and he trades strikes with Kane, even using his right arm for a punch and oh looking my. like he instantly regrets it afterwards. Oh my he then God. hits a DDT before conceding and he tags out. The pace quickens up when HBK lands his signature flying forearm and he smiles after performing the kip up he tries to slam kane but that doesn't go too well neither does the suplex counter that follows hunter comes back in for a double suplex the dx also struggle with but sean goes upstairs and he turns back the clock with his diving elbow drop hbk warms up the band for sweet chin music you can hear him shout come on glenn when kane takes a bit too long turning around Kane oh, counters wow. Sweet Chin music with a choke slam, and then The Undertaker comes back in to punish Sean in the corner. Taker performs Snake Eyes, a big boot, and a leg drop. Hunter stops Taker from hitting a choke slam so Sean can nail Taker with a super kick, but still, Taker sits up before Sean and the match goes to the outside. Hunter saves Sean from getting tombstoned on the announce table, and Hunter also performs this rough looking whip into the security yeah. barrier. That arm must have been totally out of action. Yeah, you could tell just by that whip because he's supposed to use his momentum to kind of like whip him around, but he went with him. Like you can tell the amount of pain he's in is excruciating and he's still out there competing. Insane. At this point, Kane makes Triple H pay with a choke slam through the announce table, Ooh. and that's going to be Hunter put out of action until the end of the match. From here, Sean takes a beating from the Brothers of Destruction. Frequent tags from the Brothers lead to Sean taking a suplex and a sidewalk slam. And in between all this, we have the usual punches, kicks, and choke holds. The stadium wasn't loud to begin with, but it's nearly silent at this point, wow. and it feels like the excitement of the match just isn't there, and the guys in the ring really aren't doing a whole lot to get the audience back into it. Sean manages to stop a cane top rope attack and the big red machine slowly falls off the top rope. He then throws Taker into the ring post on the outside and things then get comically bad when Sean knocks Kane's mask off with a single punch. <sighs> he knocked the mask off and he became the mayor again. <laughs> He was no longer <laughs> the devil's favorite demon. He was the mayor. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. The camera zooms in on Michaels while Kane gets his mask back. And then what should have been a great moment in the match gets ruined by a poor landing when HBK moonsaults from the top to the oh, outside. You can man. see the disappointment in Michaels' face and Taker puts a hand on his chest as if to say, yeah, sorry about that. At this point, it's completely fallen apart, and you can sense everyone involved knows it's oh, bad. Oh, this is Sean awful, John tags bro. in Hunter, and Triple H can't even run the ropes properly now as he delivers his signature facebreaker knee smash. Yeah. And when he hits the Harley Race knee, the commentators have no choice but to address the injury. Still, he's able to hit a spine buster on The Undertaker, and he counters a tombstone with a pedigree. <clears throat> he goes for the cover, Taker applies Hell's Gate, and the move gets broken up when Kane falls on his partner after taking Sweet Chin Music. <clears throat> All four men are down. The brothers then set up, and they look absolutely fucking wrecked as they get to their feet. <laughs> oh, they go man. for tandem tombstones, but a rake to the eyes from Sean and a low blow from Triple H leads to both brothers getting super kicked, and Triple H pulls off an awful looking pedigree. To oh the match. my. My God. Hunter and Sean hug in the corner and they talk about the match. You can sense some relief here and you can also sense that Triple H is seriously hurt. Not gonna lie, I felt let down after the match as oh, did many man. others. You don't know what to expect really, but this was definitely below expectations. Oh, jeez. Woo! That was rough.
On The Undertaker's Last Ride documentary, we get to see the atmosphere backstage after the match. Sean says the match totally blew and he seems annoyed about the moonsault, while Triple H gets attended to by the doctor and Shane McMahon. Taker said he had some personal problems going on at the time and he wasn't there mentally for the match at all. And Triple H talked about how he knew the match wasn't one that Taker would be happy calling his very last. Mm -mm. It was gonna make Taker double down on himself and put him right back in that bad cycle. The match didn't give Taker closure. Fans quite simply don't like to think about it as Sean's last match either and they'd yeah. rather completely ignore it. It yep. was a colossal flop that stung a little more because it featured four legends of a bygone era that fans once adored and I'm sure there were a lot of fans as disappointed as the guys in the ring. Michael Stead retired, Triple H went back to the office, Kane wouldn't be seen competing in a WWE ring again until the 2021 Royal Rumble, and The Undertaker continued the search for his final match. Mm -hmm. His match with Goldberg was up next, it was oh another disaster, boy. and if you want, you can check out my video on that match right now. If you've never watched this Brothers of Destruction vs DX match, yet you're a fan of all four of these guys, then don't bother, seriously, yeah. don't bother. If you're an HBK fan, then stick with Glad I didn't. 26 is his last match and you'll be grand. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care. Hey, man, if you guys want me to check out uh, him talking about uh, the Undertaker versus Goldberg match, I definitely will do that for you guys, man. Shout out to, once again, Wrestling Bios. Uh, go give him a subscription link to the original video will be down below. Also about that Undertaker Goldberg match, didn't watch that match either. So <laughs> if you want me to check out the whole uh, his his whole breakdown of that, I definitely will for you guys. But yeah, man, this woo that was tough. Even just watching the pictures of it and stuff, it was just it was tough. I'm glad I didn't see this match. I'm glad for whatever reason I was busy at the time, and I don't regret it. <laughs> at all this this never visually was in my eyes in this whole entirety i don't even think i watched this actual uh event that year so hey i'm okay with that uh honestly they they definitely shouldn't have been out there and that shouldn't have been the event that they have this this match on in my personal opinion and i think a lot of people's opinion so yeah uh it's it's crazy how our 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 childhood heroes that we used to look up to and you know seeing them get older and, and trying to recapture that 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 youthfulness it, it sometimes it, it don't work you know what i'm saying and it's crazy how the nostalgia train can really uh fuel up a match that probably shouldn't happen so comment down below let me know did you guys ever watch this match live what did you think of it when you did watch it live if you did man but i appreciate all the love and support on the channel road to 100k appreciate y'all kicking me see y'all next one peace